Hello, my friend. How are you feeling today? I hope you can think of one magical thing, a surprise, something like that that happened to you today. I can think of one this morning. Amazing. I did an online webinar which was has the potential to be life-changing. So, what we are going to do today, we are reading A Midsummer Night's Dream, one of my favourite Shakespeare plays. And we're starting at Act 1, Scene 1. And the play all takes place within Athens and a wood near it. Act 1, Scene 1. Athens, the palace of Theseus, the Duke. Enter Theseus, Hippolyta, who he's betrothed to, Philostrate, and attendants. Theseus. Now, fair Hippolyta, our nuptial hour draws on apace. Four happy days bring in another moon, but oh, methinks how slow this old moon wanes. She lingers my desires like to a stepdame or a dowager long withering out a young man's revenue. Hippolyta. Four days will quickly steep themselves in night. Four nights will quickly dream away the time, and then the moon, like a silver bow new bent in heaven, shall behold the night of our solemnities. Theseus. Go, Philostrate, stir up the Athenian youth to merriments. Awake the pert and nimble spirit of mirth. Turn melancholy forth to funerals. The pale companion is not for our pomp. Exit Philostrate. Theseus continues to Hippolyta. Hippolyta, I wooed thee with my sword and won thy love doing thee injuries. But I will wed thee in another key with pomp, with triumph and with revelling. Enter Aegeus and his daughter Hermia Lysander and Demetrius. Aegeus. Happy be Theseus, our renowned duke. Theseus replies. Thanks, good Aegeus. What's the news with thee? Aegeus. Full of vexation come I with complaint against my child, my daughter Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius. My noble lord, this man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander, and my gracious duke, this hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou Lysander, thou hast given her rhymes and interchanged love tokens with my child. Thou hast by moonlight at her window sung with feigning voices, verses of feigning love, and stolen the impressions of her fantasy with bracelets of thy hair, rings, gourds, Conceits, knacks, trifles, nosegays, sweet meats. Messengers of strong prevailment in, our, in our unhardened youth. With cunning hast thou filched my daughter's heart. Turned her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness. And my gracious duke, be it so, she will not hear before your grace consent to marry with Demetrius. I beg the ancient privilege of Athens. As she is mine, I may dispose of her, which shall be either to this gentleman or to her death, according to our law immediately provided in that case. Theseus, what say you, Hermia? Be advised, fair maid, to you your father should be as a god, one that composed your duty, your beauties, Yea, and one to whom you are but as a form in wax, to him imprinted, and within his power to leave the figure or disfigure it. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. Hermia. So is Lysander. Theseus. In himself he is. But in this kind, wanting your father's voice, the other must be held the worthier. Hermia. I would my father look but with my eyes. Theseus. Rather your eyes must with his judgment look. Hermia. I do entreat 
your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I may bold, nor how it may concern my modesty. In such a presence here to plead my thoughts. But I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Theseus. Either to die the death or to abjure forever the society of men. Therefore, fair Hermia, question your desires. Know of your youth. Examine well your blood. Whether if you yield not to your father's choice, you can endure the livery of a nun. For hey, to be in shady cloister mood, to live a barren sister all your life, chanting faint hymns to the cold, fruitless moon. Thrice bless thy, they that master so their blood, to undergo such maiden pil pilgrimage. But earthly are happy? is the rose distilled than that which, withering on the virgin thorn, grows, lives, die, and dies in single blessedness. Hermia. So will I grow, so live, so die, my lord, ere I will yield my virgin patent up unto his lordship, whose unwished yoke my soul consents not to give sovereignty. Theseus. Take time to pause, and by the next new moon, the sealing day betwixt my love and me for everlasting bond of fellowship, upon that day, either prepare to die for disobedience to your father's will, or else to wed Demetrius as he would, or on Diana's altar to protest for I austerity and single life. Demetrius, relent, sweet Hermia, and Lysander, yield! Thy crazed title to my certain right. Lysander, you have my father, you have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermias. Do you marry him? Aegeus, scornful Lysander, true, he hath my love, and what is mine, my love shall render him, and she is mine, and all my right of her I do estate unto Demetrius. Lysander, I am, my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed. My love is more than his. My fortunes every way is fairly ranked, if not with vantage as Demetrius's. And which is more than all these boasts can be, I am beloved of beauteous Hermia. Why should I not? Why should not I then prosecute my right? Demetrius, I'll avouch it to his head made love to Nida's daughter, Helena, and won her soul. And she, sweet lady, dotes, devoutly dotes, dotes in idolatry upon this spotted and inconstant man. Theseus, I must confess that I had heard so much and with Demetrius thought to have spoke thereof, but being full of self-affairs, my mind did lose it. But Demetrius, come and come, Aegeus, you shall go with me. I have some schooling for you both. For you, fair Hermia, look to arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will. Or else the law of Athens yields you up, which by no means we may extenuate to death or to a vow of single life. Come, my Hippolyta, what cheer, my love? Demetrius, Aegeus, go along. I must employ you in some business against our nuptials and confer with you of something merely that concerns yourselves. Exunt Theseus, Hippolyta, Aegeus, Demetrius, and Train. So it's only Lysander and Hermia left. Lysander. How now, my love? Why is your cheek so pale? How can the roses there do fade so fast? Hermia. Be like for want of rain, which I sh would, could well between them from the tempest of my eyes. Lysander, ay me, for aught that I could ever read, could ever hear by tale or history, the course of true love never did run smooth. But either it was different in blood, Hermia, oh cross, too high to be enthralled to low, Lysander, or else misgraft 
in, res in respect of years? Hermia, oh spite, too old to be engaged to young. Lysander, or else it stood upon the choice of friends. Hermia, oh hell, to choose love by another's eyes. Lysander, or if there was a sympathy in choice, if there were a sympathy in choice, war, death or sickness did lay siege to it, Maybe making it momentary tenny as a sound, swift as a shadow, short as any dream, brief as the lightning in the collied night, that in a spleen unfold, unfolds both heaven and earth, and ere a man hath power to say, behold, the jaws of darkness do devour it up. So quick, bright things come to confusion. Hermia. If then, true lovers have been ever crossed, it stands as an edict in destiny. Then let us teach our trial patience, because it is a customary cross, as due to love as thoughts and dreams and sighs, wishes and tears, poor fancies followers. Lysander. A good persuasion. Therefore hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt, a dowager, of great revenue, and she hath no child. From Athens is her house remote, seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. There, gentle Hermia, may I marry thee? And to that place the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. If thou lovest me, then steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night. And in the wood, a league without the town, where I did meet thee once with Helena, to do observance to a morn of May, there will I stay for thee. Hermia. My good Lysander, I swear to thee, by Cupid's strongest bow, by his best arrow with the golden head, by the simplicity of Venus's doves, by that which not knitteth souls and prospers loves, and by that fire which burned the Carthage queen when the false Trojan under sail was seen, by all the vows that ever men broke, that men have broke, in number more than ever women spoke. In that same pla place thou hast appointed me, tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. Lysander, keep promise, love. <gasps> Look, here comes Helena. Enter Helena. Hermia says, God speed, fair Hel Hermi Helena, whither away? Helena, call you me fair, that fair again on say. Demetrius loves your fair. Oh, happy fair, your eyes are load stars and your tongue sweet air, more tunable than lark to shepherd's ear. When wheat is green, when hawthorn buds appear, sickness is catching, oh, a favour so. Yours would I catch, fair Hermia. Ere I go, my air, my hair should catch your hair. My eye, your eye, my tongue should catch your tongue's Sweet melody. Were the world mine, Demetrius being baited, the rest I'd give to be to you translated. Oh, teach me how you look, and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius's heart. Hermia, I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. Helena, oh, that your frowns could teach my smiles such, such skill. Hermia, I give him curses, yet he gives me love. Helena, oh, that my prayers could such affection move. Hermia, the more I hate, the more he follows me. Helena, the more I love, the more he hateth me. Hermia, his folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. Helena, none but your beauty, would that fault were mine. Hermia, Take comfort, he no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this place. Before the time I did Lysander see, seemed Athens as a paradise to me. Oh, then what grace, what graces in my love do dwell that he hath turned a heaven unto a hell? Lysander, Helen, to you our minds we will unfold. Tomorrow night, when Phoebe doth behold her silver visage in the watery glass, decking with liquid pearls on the bladed grass, a time that lover's flights doth still conceal, through Athens' gates have we devised to steal. Hermia, 
and in the wood, where often you and I, upon faint primrose beds, were wont to lie, emptying our bosoms of their counsel sweet, there my life's hand and myself shall meet. And thence, from Athens, turn away our eyes, to seek new friends and stranger companies. S farewell, sweet playfellow. Pray thou for us, and good luck grant thee thy Demetrius. Keep word, Lysander. We must starve our sight, sight from lover's food till tomorrow deep midnight. Lysander, I will, my Hermia. Exit Hermia. Lysander to her, Helena. Helena, adieu, as you on him, Demetrius dote on you. And Lysander exits. Helena. How happy some of others some can be. Through Athens I am thought as fair as she. But what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. He will not know what all but he do know. And as he errs, doting on Hermia's eyes, so I, admiring of his qualities, things base and vile and holding no quantity, love can transpose to form and dignity. Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind, and therefore is winged Cupid, painted blind. Nor hath love's mind of any judgment taste. Wings and no eyes, figure unheedy haste. And therefore is love said to be a child, because in choice he is so oft beguiled, as waggish boys in game themselves forswear. And so the boy love is perjured everywhere. For ere Demetrius looked on Hermes' eyes, I'm, he hailed down oaths that he was only mine. And when that hail, some heat from Hermia felt. So he dissolved, and showers of oaths did melt. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight. Then to the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her. And for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is of dear expense. But herein mean I to enrich my pain, to have his sight thither and back again. Helena exit. And that's the end of Act 1, Scene 1. I hope you found that as intriguing as me. Um, if there's anything that you think would make it easier for you to understand or any tips or feedback or requests, let me know because I want this to be as understandable and easy to get as possible for you. Have a beautiful rest of your day or evening and I'm sending you golden light. See you next week.